Hello. Today's video is probably gonna upset a lot of people because of the things I'm about to say. However, it's a thought that's been on my mind for a while and I believe I need to talk about this. Film photography is stupid. Yeah, 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 I, I, I get it. There's, there's the common reasons that everyone knows it's stupid. Like you got some dumb old camera from 1972 and you take a picture with it. You can't even see what the hell you took. Like, how are you even supposed to learn what you're doing? Dumb, dumb, dumb. And then it's like, oh, that picture you just took? It's gonna cost you money. You can't just go out and shoot 10,000 photos in a day like you need to without going into the poorhouse. And you know what? That picture you took? If it's bad or not good, you know, just something's wrong, you, you still have to pay for it. I mean, how stupid are we? Very. However, these are merely the easy reasons to understand why film photography is dumb. What I want to do today is go over four very special reasons why film photography is stupid that you may have never even considered before. Ready? Let's do this. Reason number one, the endless anxiety over film going away. How many of you were photographing back around the year 2000 like I was? It's just been like 20 years of like, <gasps> is this the time Kodak's going under? Like every time there's a new news, news article, Kodak goes bankrupt. It's like, this is it, film's dying. Kodak does this, <gasps> film's dead, film's dead. And like, you, you, you go out and you're shooting and people are like, wow, can you even get film with that? Like, what do they know? What do they know that I don't know? What do you know about film going away? <sighs> so, so it just turns into this anxiety and panic and every year I just spend way too much money buying bulk film and putting it in a freezer. I have 20 years of just bulk film I've bought out of pure fear that film is gonna go away. And someday it might, but, but I never know. So it's just, <sighs> I, 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 I can't even fit it all in my own house freezer. I have to rent freezer space at the local slaughterhouse to keep all of my film stash. And like, what if, what if the slaughterhouse goes under? And then I can't, and they, they just like throw away all my film. Oh my God. It's the anxiety. I don't, I don't know why I put up with this shit. <sighs> that's just the first reason. Reason number two why film photography is just idiotic. All the court fees and assault charges you rack up. We've all been there. You got your big Pentax 6-7 giant metal built like a tank camera. You're setting up or to take a shot. And then like right now to click the button, some idiot walks through and ruins your exposure. That's like dollars that asshole just wasted. And, and what do you do? Well, built like a tank. Hey buddy, and you take your Pentax, you smash him over the head with it, and he's out cold, and there's blood everywhere, and bystanders like ah, ah, hiding their children's eyes, and then before you know it, the cops have you tased, you're on the ground, you've bloated your pants again, ruining another good pair of trousers, and then it's off to the courts, because you have a camera that's built too well that it can beat someone up to the point that they press charges. Then you're, you're stuck in the judiciary system for a couple months. All the decisive moments you can't shoot because you're behind bars. Get tried. You got to pay this huge fine. Where do you get the money for this fine? Oh, yeah, that's right. You have a huge stock of vintage film. Say goodbye to your 2005 stash. That one is worth a lot because there were some good films in 2005. If you don't have the luxury of like a 20 year stash of frozen film, what the hell are you going to sell? If this is your first year shooting film, you are just like double screwed. Oh, but then let's look at this scenario again. If you're out there with a expensive as shit digital camera, it's kind of plasticky and you set up your camera, you're taking your picture and a guy walks through and it's like, oh, photo ruined. But what do you care? You got an SD card with 128 gigs to put more millions of photos on. So you wave at the guy and he's like, oh, did I ruin your photo? And he's like, oh, it's okay. And then as soon as he walks out, you, you click it again, you get your photo. That wouldn't happen with the Pentax. Or else maybe if you're still a little prone to anger like some people are, 
you you like you, you think twice because it's like oh, this digital camera this is expensive and it's gonna break if I hit that guy with it you, you weigh in more realizing there's a lot more immediate financial pain to be had if you hit the guy with your camera and then if you do it just kind of hits him and breaks he's like ah that kind of tickled and then they you have a good jolly chuckle because he's looking at your broken camera and all the tears you have of the bad choice you just made no cell charges because it was a good story for that guy oh film who thought of this shit okay let's move on to the third reason why film photography is for absolute morons. Look at this. This here is your typical roll of 35 millimeter film. Do you understand how big this is? So there's this ritual that film photographers throughout the ages have always done where they just get done with a good street photography outing. They come home and they put on some music, make this Pinterest perfect little coffee table setup set up the camera they just got done shooting with, put the film they just got shooting with next to the camera, pour some coffee, and grab their favorite photography coffee book. And then before they develop the film, you study the book in the presence and hope beyond hope that aura of photography that you create helps the tones in the undeveloped film become more tonier, just epic. It's gonna be your best photos ever because of this extra magic. So in the moment you're studying whatever book you grabbed, you reach for the coffee, except you miss the coffee and grab the film. And before you know it, you've eaten the film. It's called the photographer's clog. It's very few photographers with an extraordinary constitution can deal with this situation without going to the hospital to get their stomach pumped. And if you're shooting medium format that day, God have mercy on your soul, because it is not going to be an easy ride coming out. But with digital, look at this. Look how tiny and cute that is. It's like a communion wafer. You accidentally sucked on one of those in the coffee reach mishap. It's no big deal. For the next few days, you just do your due diligence with the rubber glove treatment. And before you know it, you got all your photos back. No problem. Yay, digital! Boo, film! Finally, we have reached the fourth and most horrific reason why only an absolute moron would ever consider film photography. Think about it. When is the last time you've bought a film camera new in box that you're the first original owner of that gear? Probably never, unless you're like 95 years old. And what do we know about valued objects that have spent lifetimes with people when they die? They get haunted. Like, owning all these old cameras from the 60s and 30s and 19th century, you're just, you're just opening yourself up to a massive haunting from the souls of dead photographers. I don't know about you, but that kind of makes me paranoid. You hear strange bumps at the night, and, and you gotta just wonder, like, okay, the cats are in the bed with me. It's gotta be the ghost of the owner of my Leica M3. <gasps> you, ever, you ever buy one that has the social security number engraved in it? When you, when you engrave your God-given federal identity number into a piece of gear, your soul is now bound to that gear forever. So you may have bought that camera off an old guy who was like, Yeah, I'm just cleaning up my gear that I don't use anymore. I hope you cut it to good use. So what happens then is the guy kicks it, his ghostly soul rises out of his body, lands back down into your camera, and guess what? Your house is fucking haunted. Ah! I swear I'm alone. I swear I'm alone. I've summoned the ghost of my camera. Okay, 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 okay. So I guess my house is haunted now. I've acquired the camera curse. I guess that's what I get gambling and used gear all this year. So I guess what I guess what you need to know. Are you familiar with the camera company KEH of KEH.com? Purveyor of used cameras worldwide. Do you know why their prices on bargain gear is so damn good? I bet you don't, but here's why. KEH stands for, hold your breath, keep em haunting. I know, right? I almost 
lost my mind when I discovered this. It's nothing more than just a ghost trafficking operation to keep the haunting of dead photographers cycling to new photographers over and over so their spirits can keep shooting in the afterlife. It's absolutely horrible and the fourth and most vile reason why film photography is just plain stupid. So now that I'm cursed, I might never post another video if the ghosts eat me. If you want to make sure that I'm not cursed, now's the time to subscribe for more stupid yellings about photography that I just make up. Thanks for watching. Hey. <laughs>